كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers and sisters, when disputes happen amongst us, brothers, sometimes siblings dispute, family members dispute, community members dispute, or sometimes partners in business or whatever else it may be. When these disputes happen, Allah Almighty asks us as believers to solve the matter as per the solution offered by Allah and His Messenger. So if we have a problem and we have a dispute, look at what is right and wrong based on what revelation teaches you. That's what a believer is taught. If you claim belief, you would definitely never find any form of negativity towards a solution that's offered by Allah and His Messenger. May peace be upon Him. So in Surah Al-Mu'min, in Surah An-Nur actually, verse number 48, Allah Almighty speaks about hypocrites and others whom when they are called to solve the matters that are between them, the disputes between them, in a way that is pleasing to Allah and His Messenger, or according to the instruction of the Messenger, they don't want, they turn away. And yet, if they were finding some right, or they were finding goodness by doing that, they would do it. Which means, whether or not they follow the Messenger in the solutions is connected to what they are gaining rather than what is right and wrong. If you are losing something because justice dictates that you will lose it, success lies in allowing yourself to lose that. Because you know, look, I've lost it and, and I'm wrong here. Subhanallah. And if you are gaining something knowing that you have cheated or cheated the system or cheated in terms of what was ordained by Allah and His Messenger, then even if you got it, it's actually a loss. That is something very, very interesting because many people think that loss and gain is connected to material items. Did I lose the case? Did I win the case? But if you were wrong and you know you are wrong in that particular case, even if someone or something or some system offered you what is not rightfully yours, in actual fact, you've lost if you take it. May Allah Almighty protect us all. And that's why verse number 63 of the same surah, Surah An-Nur, that's uh, right near the end of the surah, Allah says, issuing a warning, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَن تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah says, so warn those, let them be warned who? those who go against the instruction of the messenger when the messenger has instructed when the messenger has presented a judgment in a dispute for example or when he has instructed something when he has asked you to do something and you deny it you don't want to do it you think that it's not important Allah says well give them a warning of a punishment uh, or a calamity that will come in their direction uh, now, obviously, warnings are issued by Allah, and the idea is to make us more conscious of what we should be doing and to realize that Allah is all-powerful. Just like if you were to break the law in the country you're in, you would be punished according to what, ex what type of crime you've actually committed or what you've done wrong. In the same way, in any system of justice where you have transgressed or done something wrong or committed a crime, there is a payment for it, either a fine or some form of discomfort that you will feel because of maybe being jailed or whatever else it may be. In Allah's plan, He does what He wants. Allah will definitely give a recompense of goodness with goodness and of evil with something similar. May Allah Almighty protect us. Do you know, if we look at Surah Al-Furqan, which, which actually means the criterion, referring to the Qur'an and to revelation itself. If we look at that surah, one thing that stands out quite clearly 
is the issue of company, good company and bad company what type of friends you should be having, what type of people you should allow into your circle. So what we must understand is interactions sometimes are not controlled by us because you may be on a bus, you may be on public transport, you may be on an aircraft, you may be in a public place. You will have to interact with good people and bad people, with male and female. You will have to interact with all sorts of people, people you perhaps never imagined you would interact with at your workplace or wherever else it may be. But it, it depends what level of interaction it is. It is you who will allow them or disallow them from entering into a circle that is slightly smaller or closer than the initial one of just acquaintance and dealing with them for the purpose of whatever it was. So for example, if I'm at work, or I have a business, someone walks in, they'd like to purchase something, or I, I'm walking in the street, I see people, yes, I will have to interact with them, either with an expression on my face, or with a good statement of a greeting, whatever else it may be, or I may have to help them if there is desperation, or there is a need. But will I invite them home? The answer is not necessarily. You don't just invite strangers. You don't just invite people home unless there is purpose? Or will I allow them to interact with my family, with my children? Will I trust their children to mix with mine? For that to happen, you will need to test them a little bit more. Are they on your level of understanding? Are they on your level of morals and values? Are they on, on your level of faith? Do they take their faith seriously as you do? If they tick the boxes that you are interested in, then you may allow them into a circle that is slightly closer to you. It would be a smaller circle. But if you were to allow anyone and everyone, just because this man is my business partner, now he can come in and out of my house, his family interacts with mine, and that's it. We go out on holidays together, we do everything together, but you don't know their morals, you don't know their uh, beliefs, for example. If that were to brush off onto your children or you, or anyone around you, you may just regret it big time. So Surah Al-Furqan speaks of connecting with revelation and the consciousness of Allah to the degree that it helps you distinguish between right and wrong, hence it is called the criterion. When it helps you to distinguish between right and wrong, you choose your friends wisely and you make sure that the friends are all in, a, in an order. Who is closest, who is closer, who is for example, slightly distant, and who is just an acquaintance. And some people, I don't even want to interact with them because they are toxic. So Allah Almighty speaks about uh, some of this uh, in the Quran. If we look at Surah Al-Furqan, verse number 27. Allah Almighty makes mention of the day the regret will happen when the oppressive person, the wrongdoer, will be eating his hands in regret. Eating your hands in regret is more of an Arabic saying where we regret to the highest level that we're actually putting our hands in our mouths and biting them off. You know, that is called eating your hands in regret, subhanAllah. So Allah Almighty speaks of it. The person will eat his hands in regret and say that, oh, I shouldn't have had this person as my friend. Look at what they've done to me. Look at how they have messed my life. Look at what type of regret I am in today. Look at what has happened in myself, my family, my children, my whatever else. Look at the problems they've created for me. Allah says the day of regret will come when you don't choose your friends wisely. So you'd rather have a smaller circle of friends where they are genuine, they stand for the values, they will not let you down, they won't stab you in the back, but they're small, they're small in number, than to have a whole city full of friends and everyone is just taking advantage of you in every single way and doing things with you that would result in regret. So my brothers and sisters, it's a very important piece of advice regarding friends and uh, those are the people who can either drive us closer to Allah or can take us away from Allah Almighty. 
Many times people, people's friends are those who have brought them closer to Allah. The circle they've had are those who have created a distance between them and maybe their families, maybe Allah, maybe anyone else. So remember, let's choose wisely and we will enter paradise together with our friends instead of enter, entering hellfire with the same people. May Allah Almighty protect us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب